What's up Wolfpack and welcome back to another strategy gaming video and if you're new welcome to you too and uh, I am Steel Alpha Wolf and today we are playing some Riftbreaker which is pretty much all I'm playing right now to be completely honest. Uh, notice the downgrade in the background and that's because I am moving to Costa Rica in T minus four days so I've packed up a lot of my stuff and have thrown up a sheet behind me to be better than nothing <laughs> and so what we're doing today is we're gonna do a little guide on weaponry now this is a huge part of the game it's what makes the game very fun is how many different kinds of weapons there are all the mods all the different things you can do in combination the fact that you can do two at a time and so on and so forth so um, now, before I get into the video itself, uh, I did want to mention that because I'm going to Costa Rica, I will not be bringing my gaming rig, which definitely kind of sucks and means that I won't be able to do much content, I don't think. I do have a gaming laptop, so maybe I will, maybe I won't. However, what I'm thinking, as you can see right over here, if I can point well, right over there, send your footage for review what i'm thinking i might do as content is use your guys's playthroughs and simply comment on them give feedback on them share my thoughts and strategies of what i would have done and also recognize some of the things that you guys have done and just create uh footage out of your footage so if that's something interested interesting, eh, interesting to you <laughs> send me any 1080p minimum uh, video footage to the email oliverwolfv at gmail.com. That's O L I V E R W O L F V at gmail.com. And uh, you might get featured on the channel, which would be super awesome. I'd love to do that with you and for you. So, without further ado, let's get into this bad boy. So, as I mentioned, there are a lot of different weapons my friend with all the different tiers and all the different things and so the question naturally becomes well shit what do I use and then not only what do I use but with what mods um, so let's start with uh, the fact that obviously you don't have access to all guns and whether in campaign or in survival, but especially in survival, you will not get access to all the guns so you got to be um, you got to have some priority in your research tech right now, personally, uh, I typically, and, and this is what's fun about the game, you can go uh, at your own pace and go with your own things, but personally, I make sure to get rockets as early as possible because rockets are effective on most things. They do explosive damage, that you've got the grenade launcher to lob over, all that kind of stuff. I definitely would recommend typically going for rockets uh, type guns first. Now, when it comes to melee weapons, a lot of people have been liking Power Fists lately. Um, I just don't really care to use melee much at all. I just rely on my guns and uh, and my sword to chop down trees as necessary. But I don't really use melee weapons for attacking other than clearing Knoptrix, which are basically the Zerglings and other little guys like that. Um, so that's just a little quick thing. So um, typically, like I said, first thing is rockets, then get to tier 2. And second thing is probably going to be uh, the, uh, what are these bad boys called? High Caliber? High caliber weapons. There it is. Jesus. <laughs> um, and so those are the two main ones. I'm going to like push all the way through as far as I can, as fast as I can. And the reason why is that that covers pretty much all the types of damage you need to do. There are rarely times where plasma is needed that cannot be solved by either high caliber or explosives. So it's typically what I like to do. Now, minigun is also super fun. It's pretty cool, right? Shoots. It does a lot of pew pew. Woohoo! So, you know, that's cool. Uh, and it can be good for sure, especially with some different modding. Uh, but again, this is where modding can start to become important is what mods do you have? Now, like I said, so rockets, high caliber, and then the other really powerful option is your railgun, right? Railgun is definitely one that you want to be getting because of its penetration is insane and can actually penetrate through walls, through, uh, through cliffs, through everything. Right, so that's an incredible ability. It means you can stand behind your walls and just blast like a crazy motherfucker. Um, beyond that, I don't really toy around with anything else. Swarm missiles, they're just cool. They look they look cool, right? There's nothing, uh, but I wouldn't say that they're particularly useful, right? So if I pull that out for you guys, you know, it's cool because they blast like crazy and it's a bunch of rockets, but again, it's just, it's very expensive in terms of rockets, which is already something that you have a, a small ammunition pool for, so I just wouldn't really recommend that. Where do you... That was French, by the way, in case you didn't know. Okay, so, in terms of setup, right, personally, 
what I usually end up having is a sword. Um, let's. I'm just gonna go with what happens early game kind of thing. Uh, da, 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 da. Where's my melee? Obviously, it wouldn't be red tier, but I'm just having fun because I have red tiers. Um, so I'll usually have a sword, a shotgun. Uh, potentially two, depends how early game we are. I'll start with like two shotguns right off the bat sort of thing, um, because it's just uh, good for both close and medium range, right? So you can focus in on the shotguns. If you didn't know, uh, you can hold it down and you'll see it goes much further than if I blast it right in front of me. So that can be really useful when you're dodging and shooting at the, uh, the ranged guys. I always forget their names. What are they called? I don't have their names. So, Without trying to get too complicated here, um, shotgun and rocket launcher, usually what I go with. I've seen a lot of people use a grenade launcher and I agree, it is pretty awesome because you can aim where it's going to send. So it'll let you lob over and hit the back line, which is very important to do typically to make sure that your turrets are covered and such. So, um, so grenade launcher, rocket launcher, shotgun, um, melee weapon, second shotgun, that's like your easy early game stuff, right? Then once you get to uh, past your rockets and you actually get to your high caliber, I'll usually add one sniper in, in combination with my shotgun. So I get the shotgun for short range, blast people down with the sniper, so on and so forth. Now the reality is, what's really fun about the game is you can come up with your own stuff. But if I were to try to keep it simple and what I do in all playthroughs to make sure I'm covered in all my things, like I said, shotgun, rocket launcher, sword, sniper, grenade launcher, and then two of one of those in combination or mix up. Now, let's get into the more interesting stuff, which is modding. So mods, right? So first couple tips. Tier one weapons can't have any mods. Tier two can have one. Tier three can have two. Tier four can have three. Tier four is obviously red. And again, probably won't get that in survival mode or standard survival unless you extend the time. Whatever. So let's talk mods. Uh, another really important thing about mods and stats in general. Every time you craft, there is a random roll of potential bonuses. So let's craft something, for example. So see, what's in green is things that aren't part of the standard weapon and have come out of this particular craft. Now, I'm not saying you should like farm crafting and try to get the best roll, um, but there's a reason why you might want to. So let me do this again just so you can see. So 10.5, 2.17 per shot. Let's try again. All right, we'll see now this one's projectiles per shot as the bonus. Uh, projectiles per shot. See, now it's different. See, now it's 1.2 instead of 1.1. This time it wasn't projectile shots at all, it's critical hit chance that's increased. So you see, every time you craft an item, the roll changes. Uh, but anyways, so the only reason why it'd be worth it to farm a roll is because of the second principle for mods. If you do not have a stat, so for example, uh, cluster projectiles is at zero for the shotgun right now, you will not be able to add mods that increase that stat you will have to enable it first so for example right now for cluster projectiles i only see my enable ones even though if i go into my all mods um which by the way if you didn't know there's down here on the bottom right you can see all the mods that you have here i have cluster projectiles plus 15 plus 28 plus 31 plus 34 and so on and so the first thing you actually need to have is a mod that enables it so once it's enabled, now I'll be able to actually see, there you go, the adding of the percent, basically. So first you have to have the enabling mod, then you have to actually have the percentage mod. And here, I'll even take this off. And now you'll see, even though it's on right now, because it's not actually enabled, I have zero cluster projectiles, right? So it's not actually working until I put the enabled on it. So now there's a cluster projectile bo boost, and then I add it, and now, there we go, it's it, it's adding onto it even further. All right, and then here we go, we can add more. But again, if I had rolled a sniper that actually has projectile, cluster projectiles already a part of it, then I wouldn't need to enable it because it's already part of the gun's build, and therefore I can just add an increasing stat to it. So sometimes you guys might be wondering like, oh, why is it that I can see a mod here, but I can't see it there? Uh, often it's because it's, well, there's two reasons. One, 
it's not enabled. You don't have the enabled feature of it, right? So again, even with uh, grenade launcher, I don't know if grenade launcher can have cluster projectiles. Yeah, there you go. So it's at zero, right? So it's not activated. Once I activate it, now I'll be able to see all the cluster projectile bonuses, right? Cluster projectiles plus 31. Da -da -da -da. By the way, if you haven't figured it out, cluster projectiles is one of my favorite. And I will show you why after. So anyways, so that's reason number one. The reason number two that you might not be able to use a mod is because it just doesn't go with that gun. So not every single gun can use every single mod, just like not every single tower can use every single mod. Um, I'm not going to start telling you which one doesn't and does work. Just know that that's the case. So the only two reasons you wouldn't see it is either one, it hasn't been enabled. Two, it cannot be used for your gun. Carbonium storage is full. Boop, Build boop, more storage boop. facilities. Okay. So now let's talk about good mods for guns um so typically the ones you're not really going to care for are critical hit chance that's just if you have them you can throw them on damage boost not a big deal the only reason you'd want to use a damage boost is if there's a um a specialization you're going up against so if you're going up against uh, i don't know them off the top of my head but a particular alien that has a weakness to acid throw on some acid damage right that would be a good thing to do Otherwise, don't use it. There's uh, better damaging things you can do or more effective things you can do. Like my favorite are projectile properties, as you can see here. Uh, cluster projectiles is one of my favorite. So I'll try to show you with the sniper what a cluster projectile does. So when you fire, you see when it actually splits. That is as a result of the cluster projectile. So uh, it's really good for... 90% of weapons, cluster projectiles is a fantastic choice because it basically just doubles and triples the amount of damage on hit. Right, So cluster projectiles is very powerful. One that's specifically po powerful for rockets is penetration. So for target piercing, yes I just said penetration, get over it. Target piercing is really cool because watch what will happen when I shoot a rocket through. So the rocket literally hits a target, blows up, and then continues to hit another target and blow up again. So that was one rocket, but notice it had two explosions. See, and then it continues. So personally, cluster projectiles with tar target piercing on rockets is completely insane and super, super fun. See, it continues through. Pretty ridiculous. So definitely do that. So another fun combo that's worth playing, and again, there's many things you can do, is the sniper, and you put on splash damage, and then obviously attack speed. Sniper is very slow, uh, or the high caliber rifle, but putting splash damage is really fun because it basically turns it into a bomb sniper thing. So if we take a look here, right, big spread range, way more than before. So it's great because obviously the sniper is so powerful, but one of its flaws is it's narrow aiming. So if you add splash damage to your sniper when it hits, it actually pretty much does an explosion. You just don't really see it like a rocket. Another one you might like to do is sword stun stacking. Wow, that sounded really cool. Triple S. Sword stun stacking. Um, <laughs> and you can do this with any melee weapon, but the fact is if you're up face to face with the aliens and you're trying to do some melee um the best thing most valuable thing to do would be to stop them and so if you add stun to your melee weapons it's going to really do well at stopping them from wiping you out um, so it's just a fun little thing there's not much else you can do with melee yes you can increase like range and all that kind of stuff but personally the fact is if you're at the point where that's what happens when you don't have any health mods on Apparently. The fact is, if you're in range or melee in a big battle, being able to stun enemies a lot more is extremely effective. Now, two mods you actually want to be very careful with that do increase DPS quite a lot, but actually have a bit of a flaw, are the projectiles per shot and projectiles per burst. And the reason why these are risky is that this increases ammunition spending. So in the beginning, early game, even mid game, having that much ammunition spending off a single shot so see look one shot and i'm spending 50 ammunition per shot and early game that's a lot of ammunition so i'd say you really want to be careful with um the mods for like i said projectiles per shot and projectiles per burst avoid them in the early game they're great later on for added dps but i wouldn't use them early at all the next gun i'd like to talk about is the railgun so railgun 
is crazy amount of DPS, does already a lot of, um, uh, it does a lot of piercing, it does a lot of, um, has a lot of range, all these things, that there's a lot of these mods that are kind of redundant or unnecessary. So like never increase range, splash damage, not a big deal, uh, stun, obviously not. Uh, most of these things you just really don't need. The only things you want, personally, that I've done is um, splash damage for fun, but really attack speed is, is the big thing. If you can increase your attack speed, that's the best way to really get the more bang for your buck. And so to show you what I mean, see the, we've got these Canopters across the rock. I can nail them from across the rock. And so if I'm, as you can see, increasing my attack speed, I'm just a laser cannon on steroids. It's pretty ridiculous. So rail guns are sexy. So when it comes to the grenade launcher, it's pretty obvious, but basically what you would want to do is increase your attack speed, increase your splash range. Those are your basic ones you could do. Uh, you could also throw on the cluster projectiles that basically blows up more, right? So as you blow one up, it, it'll expand into more, assuming it's the mathematical ratio. So you can get those double explosions, but again, cluster projectiles are actually kind of rare early game, it seems. Um, so you're better off trying to just get some increased attack speed and some increased splash range. Now, the other thing to talk about is your movement skill. So you've got power jump, teleport, camouflage, and dash. And personally, I keep it simple. I keep the dash. The reason I like dash... Thank you. Thank you. The reason I like to keep it to dash is it's just super effective and most importantly it has the shortest cooldown. Right, so teleport has an insanely long cooldown. Power jump I feel has a little bit of a longer cooldown. But the reality is the dash and the fact that you can leave this damaging trail behind is extremely powerful. Um, to the degree that, you know, especially... Actually, I'll give you an example. Let's go do this bad boy over here. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know, when you open the map you get stuck. If you just start like moving again while the map is on, you can keep moving. Uh, another little tip real quick for you guys. If you're drilling and you hold your drilling, you can you, it'll stop when you open the map, but you can start drilling again and while the map is on and you can actually look at the map while you're drilling. A lot of people don't realize this. Anyways, so check it out. Let's call in the baddies. Let's go. Oh, they're going to my freaking cultivators. Well, that kind of sucks. Anyways, so... See? It's a wall of doom. You're messing with my videos, Canoptrix. Oh, they almost got it. Look at all that fire. I just realized this is terrible for my cultivators. <laughs> Probably should have gone with, like, electricity or something. Uh, na, 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 na. Energy. So, all to say, I think that the um, damaging dash is your best movement skill uh, because it stays, it's very low cooldown, as you can see. And it's great for escaping, and then people, they, they chase you right down that line and get destroyed along the way. Uh, so overall, highly recommend it. And that's pretty much it. Now, there's obviously a lot of other weapons, right? There's the blaster, the laser. Blaster's great because it doesn't cost any ammunition, so it's good to have as your back pocket if you're early in mid-game. But again, it's not fantastic compared to your other option. Laser just doesn't make any sense to me. It increases in damage over time on a single target, but the reality is you're running around, dashing around. Your ability to stay aimed on one target, not going to happen. Nuclear missile is dope. I would definitely recommend it. The only thing is it's you know, a little bit later game in the research. And um, yeah, other than that, it's just freaking awesome. It's a nuke. Like, come on. Uh, burst rifle. I just prefer the um, the sniper over that. So I think that's just a personal preference. I just don't really care for the way that it functions. But I've actually seen a lot of people run uh, burst rifle. And again, you add uh, things like cluster projectiles on that or um, uh, even splash damage and piercing. It could be very powerful. Shotguns, yes. Cryogenic atomizer, totally not ever going to use that in a real game. Flamethrower, it's like I might as well just use my sword or my hammer. There's no need to add a flamethrower for that. Minigun, like I said, it's very fun, very cool to have, but not super necessary with this current loadout. You just don't really need it. Uh, but again, it could be just something to do for fun. 
Small machine gun, don't ever use it. It's just so ridiculously weak. Again, if you're going to go for the small machine gun, you might as well go for the minigun. Uh, hammer, splash damage, super fun. Power fist, uh, very fast damage, and he looks like a raging buffoon, which is hilarious and fun to watch. Never use the spear. Don't think I ever will. And I think that's pretty much the entire list of all the guns. Oh, Swarm Missile, mentioned earlier. Uh, it's fast shooting. It's fine late game hey, kind of thing. Welcome to the wolf pack, brother. Hello. Thank you, Jacob Jenkins, on YouTube for the subscribe. Sub, somebody sub, sub. Which reminds me, subscribe. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, and I think that's pretty much it. Corrosive gun, yeah, never, never use that either. So, can you be out of sight? I feel nervous. I'm so nervous. You make me nervous because you're so sexy. Can you say hi? Hi. Well, on the camera. The camera. Say hello to my fiance that is coming to Costa Rica with me. She's quite amazing. Um, all right, so that's going to be it for today's video. I definitely went in a lot of different directions here, and I hope that you got a few little golden nuggets. And there's a lot of different things when it comes to this that I think a lot of people don't realize and how it works, especially when it comes to mod usage and the enabling of mods. So uh, otherwise, you know, like I said earlier on, send me some footage of your own. I'd love to maybe do a little casting of footage and uh, talk about how I would do things differently, recognize some of the things you do right, all that kind of stuff. And then other than that, obviously remember to like, subscribe, comment, all the fun things. And by the way, in case you didn't notice, I'm wearing that Rift Breaker swag today, hey, boys and girls. Pack, hey, another subscribe. Look at that. Your Doom Mao Doom. Boy, that is an interesting name. Anyways, nonetheless, the Awful Wolf, signing off.